Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and uh, I've talked about this for a while. I've really wanted to play Babylon 5 I Found Her, which is a fan-made game based on my favourite TV show. In the northern skies of Narn, there's a dim yellow star that rises each night. Centuries ago, the Narn named this star the Tharn. But since then, no one thought that the neutral system surrounding the star was worthy to explore. In the year 2254, a Narn task force explored the system and discovered the Tharn IV, a beautiful green planet suitable for colonization. But there was something that Earth Alliance spy probes discovered that was missed by the Narns. A cold, distant world of massive deposits of Quantum 40, the Tharn XI. The Earth Force Intelligence Division, with the support of the Psy Corps faction known as Department Sigma, began a covert operation to possess the planet and its resources. Well, that's the intro. Um, so yeah, this is entirely a fan-made game by a bunch of Russians, basically. Which I guess is why uh, it never got, you know, shut down or anything. Um, it's their own game engine, but the game engine's pretty old now. I believe it dates from, like, 2002. The the graphics card, or the latest graphics card supported is the Radeon 8500, and I'm not the 8500 HD, because that would be next generation. No, this is a 10 generation old graphics cards that is their latest version. But yeah, I mean, they have most of the models, many of the signature ships from the series, and uh, I'm just skipping over the training. It uses a Newtonian flight model with some uh, help from the autopilot, so you can switch it between inertial and direct mode. And uh, you're flying a Star Fury, which is, of course, the signature fighter in the TV show. And there goes hyperspace. Yes, yeah, so everything in, in Babylon 5 on. jumps Follow around now, using hyperspace. Uh, Don't hurry too much. The jump gate will recharge itself for the next 60 seconds. So, yeah, to get into the jump gate, you need... Uh, well, to, to, to get into hyperspace, you use a jump gate. Uh, unless you're a really, really big ship, but we're a Star Fury, so we have to use the hyperspace you know, jump gates, which connect space all over the place, and of course need Quantium 40, which is the unobtainium that was mentioned in the precursor video. So there, a nice picture of Jupiter. We're hanging out near Io, and uh, we're just waiting for the gate to open up so we can get lost in go, hyperspace. Go, go, go. Full speed ahead! I get a collision alert with hyperspace or something. And so here we are in hyperspace. Everything, here we are. everything is hard here. Navigation hot mode is activated. We have several minutes before we will get carried away from the hyperspace beacon by the currents. So I'll keep it short. Look at the contact list on the left. There's a list of available local beacons: Earth, Mars, Ganymede, Titan, just to name a few. And of course IO, that's where we came from, and that's why this is the closest one. Target the IO beacon and stay within, say, 10 kilometers from it, while I'm explaining the basics of hyperspace navigation. Yeah, basics of hyperspace navigation is if you go too far off beacon, you are lost. And it's very hard to navigate if you go off beacon. So that's what, there's this percentage this indicator. What's going on? Hmm? Excuse me? Uh, you're not moving. You're not having any difficulties, are you? Or, uh... Enjoying the sight? <laughs> yeah, kinda. We've got a job to do, the Chanta. Good luck. Same to you, Flyboy. Don't get lost out here as, uh, we ain't coming back for you. Okay, enough said. Let's make a move. It's still some distance from here. Accelerate your ship to one kilometer per second and follow me to the cook beacon. So yeah, where you see the percentage indicator, that's signal strength, and that gives me an idea of what way hey, the hey. signal is. Freighter and Chanter calling all ships. Mm -hmm. Damage. Navigation failed. Off the beacon. I repeat, we are drifting off. Dear God, Sigma-1, did you hear that? Yes, sir. That's the same transport we've met near the I.O. beacon. They were saying something about reactor damage. They've lost navigation and they're drifting off the beacon. Sir, we have to go after them. We can save them. We can bring them back. But the training... Ah, to hell with it. Let's go back to the Soul Beacon. Hit it! Speed, yes, sir. sir! So yes, of course, I'm flying as fast this as I can. This is Athena. We're conducting a search in this area. Please assist us. Athena, this is our fourth training group. We'll do what we can. So of course we have the classic training mission interrupted by real emergency uh, meme. 
And uh, yeah, it's quite a good one, actually, and this is why I'm playing it. Alright, Sigma 1, follow the sole Proxima beam and keep your sense to maximum. Just hope we pick up something. I'll do my best, sir. Now, I'm flying this using a Wingman Attack 2 joystick, I think, which is about, you know, 10 years old as well. Unfortunately, it turns to the left a little, and I haven't quite managed to get the dead zone figure out. I've tried this with Kerbal Space Program, and this okay, joystick is I hopeless. Okay, I recommend to fly along the beam with a speed of around 1 to 2 kilometers per second. Don't fly too fast, or we might miss them. And yeah, it's here that you really and see... stick to the beam. I don't want to lose you as well. It's, it's re here you really see the Russians' dedication to uh, realism in space games and everything, because... Uh, if you fly along the beam at one kilometer per second, it takes you like 20 minutes to actually get to the point where you can find the spacecraft. So uh, it can be incredibly tedious, <laughs> uh, which, which of course is true for many simulations, right? You know, you're you have a long way to fly. Gosh, uh, sensors don't really seem to be that useful here. Let's hope we'll get a visual contact. Yes, let's hope we get it soon. So I'm going to accelerate up to 2 kilometers per second. These things, the Star Fury accelerates at about 3 Gs, which is pretty good. Um, but even then, it still takes you know a good minute or so to get up to a, a 2 kilometers per second. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm flying along and I'm using the translation controls to try to make sure that my signal strength stays high enough. Anyway, once you fly along this beacon, you you hear the radio messages as they're looking for the spacecraft. And it'll be a while before uh, I can actually pick things up here. You see the ladders on the left and right on top of the screen. Those show you your velocity in three dimensions. And as you turn, it'll, you know, it represents your actual velocity. So yeah, just, you can see the messages appearing in the comm system on the, the right. Just, you know, generic, where are you, Enchanter? Please respond. We're looking for you, etc., etc. Yep, got to put up with this for 10 minutes. So, <laughs> good thing I'm this skipping. Is EAS Athena. Can you hear me? Oh no, I think you're lost. So, you see, we're now, uh, well, ten, a thousand kilometers away in hyperspace. Of course, in hyperspace, distances are all different. So, a uh, thousand kilometers in hyperspace can be light years in. Uh, real space, which uh, I guess that's how it works. Although I, I guess it's probably a, a non-Euclidean geometry, so that you know if you get too far off, things get really weird. This is hopeless. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. I wonder if there are any species who can set the direction hyperspace. I know such a species. I know such a species. So yeah, plot point. Your pilot is a psychic. And that's you picking up the thoughts of the lost crew, because you're a telepath. And in hyperspace, uh, telepathic abilities are amplified, supposedly. So we're just looking around for this ship, and you have the ability to find it because you have this secret telepathic ability. But they don't tell you that! That was me looking to see if they were on the calm frequency. Fire! I, I need to do something. Pretty spooky, I have to say. Enchanter, this is Sigma One. Can you hear me? There, we, so we got a signal, so it's time to turn around and look around this area and see if we can find it. So I'm just turning around, I've overshot a little, uh, I start just kind of looking around and I get another go. And then I start to get a little disoriented. Um, it doesn't help, of course, that the background is moving all the time, that's part of the fun. Yeah, that's another static. So I'm now, I've switched out of inertial mode, I'm flying in direct mode, which means the direction I'm pointing is the, dire the ship direction the ship tries to go. And you see I get confused, I actually start flying off the beacon instead of towards the beacon. Like, 
Yeah. But maybe I thought I was looking for the ship off Beacon. I'm not sure. I'm trying to find it on the comm system still. Nothing there. You see the signal strength going down now. And going even further off Beacon because I get confused. You know, you should have that little blue icon line going through the target. 13%. Yeah, I get, I'm doing a really bad job here. And frankly, it's a miracle I completed this mission. <laughs> ah! I'm lost in hyperspace! So I, I turn. And I'm not sure what way I turned, of course, because the, every, the orientation all just starts messing around. But I do get back on beacon. Holy moly. It's genuinely spooky being in hyperspace. <laughs> let's let's get back to the beacon. Uh 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 where is it? Proxima There look! The There's the freighter! Signal one, this is Cantor. I'm afraid it's too late. No it's not! Signal one to all ships! I found her! I repeat, I found her! Hold your position, Sigma-1. We are close. Don't stand around. They won't last for long. Stand by. We're coming in at top speed. Enchanter, this is Sigma-1. Hold on a little longer. Just a little longer. Two Hold weeks, on. Sigma. Energy spike in the main reactor. Stay clear. Stay clear. No! Damn it. Oh, Damn. Oh. Sigma-1, what's going on? She exploded when I was getting closer. The reactor damage was too severe. Damn plot Damn. armor! Damn. Athena, this is Sigma-1. Do you have a sensor recording of all this? Yes, Sigma-1. We got it all. Too bad it's not the kind of data we prefer to have. Let's get back. We're getting too far from the beacon. You and your instructor are relieved, and may proceed with your mission. Yes, sir. Alright, get out of here, Sigma-1, and head back to the Soul Beacon. I'll wait for you here. Yeah. Thankfully, I don't actually have to fly the whole way back to the Soul Beacon, but, uh... The, the mission will just automatically put you there because at this point it, it presumes you're able to get there. Woo! So yeah, when you come out of hyperspace you get a nice blue vortex. When you go in you get a yellow vortex. You are entering the restricted area. Identify yourself and transmit your clearance code. CNC, this is Earth Force Training Group. Please stand by. We're transmitting the clearance code now. Training Group, this is CNC. Your code seems to check out. You are cleared to approach the station. Let's see how good they teach rookies this year. Technically the same way they taught you last year, Derek. Nikolai? Goodness, I hadn't expected this pleasant surprise. Spare me. You never were a very good liar. If you excuse me, gentlemen, I'm of course I'm Nikolai in this game. Clear. We've got a training session to finish. Roger that. I'll wait for my turn, sir. CNC out. Thank see, I'm just gonna Signal skip one, through the next bit as we fly to the, the fly to the target site, basically. Pilot. Again, you see it accelerates full speed and then uh, slows down at full speed, you know, full thrust. That's the fastest way to travel around. And now I find myself surrounded by boxes, which I proceed to lock you on, and finally I get a chance to shoot them. Damn so box! With dummy Take that! Okay. I've already shot everything I, I want. Won't waste too much time on trash. Roger that. Now I want some live targets. Very good, Sigma so one. use a calm system. So now, wait in the shooting area. Since see, this is a structure. Launch the opposition. Roger that. Um, squad, launch. And so finally, you're going to get to see Two some actual combat. Try to take them out. They are armed with the same dummy cannons. Your computer will simulate the damage as if it's all for real. The rules are simple. The one whose hull condition drops below 10% is considered dead and leaves the game. And yeah, you have to kill all of these guys uh, in this. So it's like one against you, know, two against one, and you're the, you're always at a disadvantage. But they are just AIs. So again, you see me, uh, it's in non-inertial mode, and as I'm turning, you see that it slips sideways because it's trying to correct all the time. I'm 
pretty much just killing time there. We get Alpha. Where's Alpha? No. We're waiting for the Alpha 1 and 2 to appear so I can start shooting at them. This is me just practicing maneuvering around. See, 193 is the velocity I've set, and it will try and do 193 along my velocity vector. There, there's Alpha 1, finally. Alpha 1 and 2, launched. So for combat, I actually tend to switch out of direct mode and switch to inertial mode because it makes side slipping a whole lot easier. So here we go. They're going to come in fast and then I'm going to try and shut them down. The the guns take energy and you know you can fi rapid fire them then you're resorting to slow fire. It's, you know standard, you know space fighter combat thing. It's just using purely inertial motion uh, system. Okay, so for all the translation the controls, you have you know, W, A, S, D, and Z and Don't X. The shooting area. And, and so what I'm trying to do is when they're firing at me, I'm going to use the translation controls to skip up and down and over and hopefully make it hard for them to actually shoot me, right? And also that shaking is showing that I'm using the afterburner, which gives me extra forward thrust, but cuts down my ability to to, uh, to turn. It's very useful at times, so it's like another button. There's a whole cluster of buttons under my left hand for actually flying this spacecraft. So I'm just waiting for the range indicator to appear. See me slipping sideways? Ah, there we go. Gotta get on there. Oh, now out of range again. Maybe I should go for the other dude. There we go. Enemy locking on! Whoa! So I see him thrusting down. Okay, trying this dude. Nope. Switching targets to the one that I think is easiest to hit. So it's really hard to tell what way I'm, I'm far. It'd be nice to see like an external view to show how my engines are firing. There's probably a way to do that, but I'm inside. Gosh, they are really- Oh, they are finally got some health hull knocked off him. Taking- I haven't taken any damage yet. Which means I'm an awesome pilot, obviously. Better than Warren Keffer. Remember Lieutenant Warren Keffer? He was a character in the second season of Babylon 5. And uh, they accidentally wrote him into too many episodes, so he had to get a credit on the opening, on the opening of the show. And then they killed him off at the end of season two. He followed a shadow battle cruiser into hyperspace, and then uh, finally got killed. The shadows, of course, they don't use jump gates. They use uh, some sort of weird phasing system in Babylon Five. They would like phase in and out of hyperspace using some ripply you know, high-tech effect to show that they were better than everyone else. It was kind of cool. Oh my goodness! It's like, you could just hear my engines firing all the time because, you know, let's face it, if you're not firing your engines, you're sitting down. Oh my- whoa! Almost crashed! Come on, 27%. Yay! Alpha right, 1 and 2 vanquished. Era, now let's get back to the shooting area. Uh, there's a real danger when you're doing this level, if you're flying like me, that you, you fly beyond the 15 kilometers in the target area. So yeah, you kill, if you don't kill these guys, then the uh, mission failed. This is not a game for the easy, you know, for, for crap players, basically. People are complaining about the checkpoints in Strike Suit Zero. It's nothing compared to this game, <laughs> seriously. Uh, you know, you can get shot down by the last of the test fighters and then have to repeat the entire mission. In the hyperspace one, you don't actually have to find the, the freighter. Uh, you can just kind of skip out of it. it. It doesn't stop your progression. But it's a nice, really cool bit of the story, I think, especially when you have the whole, you know, telepathic messages coming in. Okay, Beta 1 is coming in, Beta 2. Come, Sigma one. Engage and destroy the opposition. Engage and destroy with maximum prejudice. Okay, 
see, where are they? See them marked red? Wait for the range, wait for the range. Come on. Zipping around this side. Now at the bottom of the screen, that globe, that's your radar system. and you, It's kind of cool because, you know, you get partial signatures and stuff on it. It, it actually looks great when it's working. It may not actually be that useful, but it does look very photogenic as a, a radar system for a you know, 3D spacecraft game. Enemy locking on. Okay. Yes. Oh, there he is there. Ah, man, I'm hopeless at shooting these guys. Seems I get the red lock on only- Whoa! Crap. Knocked 15% off my structure from that hit. I actually collided with the dude. It's, you know, the guns are supposed to be simulated, but let, the collisions aren't. That's me accidentally hitting the comms button because it's next to my vertical thrust of buttons. Now later on you start to get uh, guided missiles and other weapon systems. And uh, there's actually a lot of, there's a full like mission campaign in it and there's a whole bunch of uh, fan made campaigns. The only problem is that the, the developer's website has basically gone offline. And it's very hard to find uh, an up-to-date version. I, it's very easy to actually find the patch, but to find the full download is harder. And uh, I've had problems. I downloaded a version which the scripting broke halfway through one of the training missions. You managed to That's... knock out one. Only one more to go. Only one more to go. Yay! Come on. Beta 2. Try not to crash into him this time. Oh, that's the comm system again. Of course, there are people that are probably really good at this game that are telling me that I'm terrible at it. You know what? I don't care. I quite enjoy being bad at games. Oh! Uh-oh! More simulated damage. Guns on these things do not fire projectiles at particularly high speeds. It'd be cool to have like the, the Minbatar, not Minbatar, <laughs> the Minbari! They're, they're the laser systems that would slice up ships. This is, this is, <laughs> this is Babylon 5, not EVE Online. Zeta-1, status report. Systems check, top down. Okay, Zeta-1. Check the ejection system. You're gonna need it. Sigma huh. one. Okay, okay. Just couldn't help it. Zeta one. Launch. Here we go. Here's the guy. Gotta beat him to complete the mission. Thankfully, it's only him against me. But I have already knocked my hull down to 66%. So, not doing too well. I kind of love the Star Fury design, it makes a lot of sense from like a maneuvering standpoint, but at the same time, you know, space fighters don't make sense. <laughs> as much as I love flying them. Okay, there's Beta 1 and 2 hanging back, no doubt hoping that Zeta will come along and kick my butt. Sigma 1, you're about to get some company, cause misery loves company. Yeah, seven kilometers. Collision alert! I hope that wasn't... Okay. The collision alert hat sounds a lot, because the game thinks you're going to collide with something. Yeah, I'm slipping sideways and flying no, towards it, huh? So Yay! I already have the edge now. Whoa! Over the top! See, again, I'm sliding up over the top while trying to shoot him. You can see where the bullets are coming in and try and kind of adjust your, your strafing to avoid them. 
Yes. Come on. If only I could read your mind. Oh. Man, my, my weapons are forever at the limit of their thermal limits. Ah, okay. Let that cool down. I think there's a button that perhaps unlinks my weapons that might make things a little easier since it seems I seem to be having a terrible time you know, hitting things. Damn it! It's not fair! Hooray! Yeah, it is so fair! <laughs> nice! Mission accomplished, Sigma One. I'm impressed. You made some nice flying out here. Thank you, and so, it's this is just a training mission. I have mission. some good news, by the way. The captain of the Midway has agreed to give us a lift back to the Sol system. They will be departing in a few hours, so we have plenty of time to prepare. Now, Sigma-1, you can proceed to the station. Request docking using your comms. See you at the debriefing. Okay, so we're just going to use the autopilot to head back to the station. It'll be easy enough. Um, so yeah, the, the game is kind of hard to acquire right now. There's a few download sites. What you're looking for is the 1.1 binary, and then if you look at what's left of the official forums, you can find a 1.15 patch. When you combine those, you get most of the features. And if you look at the official forums, there's also links to all of the mission packs and stuff that were fan-created. There's a lot of new models in there. Uh, I believe there's also the option to fly the, the Thunderbolt version of the Star Fury, uh, which was the advanced ones that turns up in, in later versions of the, uh, in the later part episodes of the show. The initial Star Furies were designed to be space only, and uh, the Thunderbolts were supposedly capable of going into the atmosphere and being more awesome and dangerous. And initially, only the bad guys have them. Uh, you know, and you also get to fight against the the giant Earth cruisers. You know, the ones with the the, the middle section that spins to Your provide gravity. Proceed to the main hangar. Proceed to the main hangar. There we go. Ah, oh, I'm way off center here. So I'm just going to fly in in direct mode here, aiming for the middle, 50 meters per second. These things are pretty big. I'm just gonna kind of cruise in over here. This feels a lot like a X3, you know, the docking very carefully, and at least it's not like Elite where you had to match rotations with the hangar. But uh, sure, that might happen in other versions. So anyway, I, I I got this game. It runs really well on current generation hardware. There's a few glitches here and there. In particular, the, you'll notice that the star field or the velocity field points seem to be flying in completely the wrong direction half the time. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to fix that. Honestly, I'm not even sure about the future of the game. But uh, I thought it was worth bringing up because it is space combat with you know full-on inertial physics. And it's based on my favourite TV show. And so now we have a bit of uh, another cutscene. Sheffer System 2254. Commander Shevchenko, personal log. February 18th, 2254. Two months on board the Perseus. It's been the most boring assignment of my whole damn life. I think I was saying this before. Another system, another patrol, same boredom. Now this is set before Babylon 5 TV I'm show. I'm longing for a little crisis or something. I, I just hate to run idle, that's all. I mean, it has to be important. Otherwise, why be here at all? And there you see his Psycor badge. Anyway, that's enough for me. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.